Good day, everybody. Zach here with RevZilla, and welcome to another episode of Daily Rider. Our guest today is the Livewire S2 Del Mar. That is a fully electric 85 horsepower motorcycle that costs about $15,000. And just like any electric motorcycle, there are plenty of concerns and criticisms swirling around this bike about how far you can go before the battery runs out and how much it costs. And to be honest, I'm just a little bit bored with those conversations. <laughs> Uh, we will put the spec sheet to the test just like we always do here on Daily Rider. But here's what's on my mind. Is it any good? Is it fun? Does it work like a motorcycle should work and therefore enter itself into the conversation of viable, fun transportation? Well, let's try and answer some of those questions, shall we? Let's go, everybody. Alrighty, everybody, before we get going here, friendly reminder that this video is brought to you by Revzilla, the YouTube channel that you are watching. Revzilla is an e-commerce company. Revzilla sells parts and accessories for motorcycles and people who love them. And we make these shows, Daily Rider, The Shop Manual, High Side, Low Side Podcast, and CTXP Adventures, in the hopes that it makes motorcycling a more entertained, informed, and enjoyable place to be. Next time you need something for you or your bike, we hope that you'll consider Revzilla. And in the meantime, thanks for watching. Y'all yeah, right, the old Livewire Del Mar. Highly anticipated electric motorcycle from the company Livewire, which is the spin-off electric company from none other than Harley Davidson Motor Company, as it says here on the side. So that's part of the name broken down. The rest of the name, S2 Del Mar. S2 comes from this arrow, as in bow and arrow, System 2, as it's called within Livewire, which is um, basically the code name for the structure of the bike. Not the wheels, not the suspension, not the handlebar, not the seat, but the whole sort of frame and powertrain, which Livewire intends to turn into other motorcycles as well, eventually, as far as I understand it. And of course, Del Mar references the flat track aesthetic, the look and feel of this motorcycle, Del Mar's famous fairground and flat track race in American flat track history. And that's why this bike has 19 inch wheels and tires and has this sort of like low rise handlebar and the stubby tail section. It's meant to look like a flat tracker. And I personally think that uh, they did a pretty darn good job. I think it's pretty handsome. A couple of technical details. You will notice that there is a radiator and you also notice that there are big fins on the side of the battery uh, and the sort of like frame battery casing thing <laughs> and yeah the battery is air cooled the water cooling is for the inverter and the charger and the motor which are other pieces of an electric powertrain that get hot in the case of the del mar they're liquid cooled speaking of the inverter and whatnot that stuff is uh, tucked in this box under here and this sort of like gaudy fins on the outside of the of the del mar not gaudy but noticeable fins on the outside of the del mar uh case the battery and then of course the drivetrain is back here next to the um or uh, just below i should say the linkage for the rear shock suspension is by showa front and rear and i believe the fork is fully adjustable and the shock is adjustable for spring preload and rebound all of the um, foundational structure is similar in so much as there's the middle of the bike <laughs> and then there's a fork and a swing arm and some wheels. The powertrain is obviously different than a standard internal combustion motorcycle, but aside from that, it's uh, pretty conventional, right? You got uh, wheels and handlebar and seat and not much else. It's very kind of Spartan in its look. It's got this swing arm mounted rear fender to keep the, the sort of tail kind of sleek and stubby. Okay, I think that might be the basics out of the way here. Let's flick it on and take a look at this little dash. This is the same dash unit from, basically, the same piece of hardware, I think, from the Harley-Davidson Sportster S. So it is a full color TFT dash, and it's asking me to raise the side stand. <laughs> so let's do that, shall we? Uh, we'll check out this little LED headlight up front here. Pretty cool headlight. Airy says he thinks it looks like Bender from Futurama, and I think he is right. Uh, yeah, okay, everybody. Side stand is raised. I was going to say press start. I'm going to press start and we are going to be ready to rumble. And I'm going to start in eco mode because I'm riding an electric motorcycle. I actually just like eco mode. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Let's go to work, everybody. All right, we can talk about basic specs now on the old S2 Del Mar. 
first thing I'm going to do with this stoplight is talk about seat height, which is listed at 32.2 inches, which is sort of, I guess, on the high end of normal. But the bike feels very low. You can see I got a pretty good bend in my knee, and it's extremely narrow between uh, your legs. So the standover height is actually pretty low, and uh, it's very agreeable from a sort of a yeah approachability standpoint, despite the seat height being listed as a little high. Other pertinent specifications, I said it cost $15,000, actually fifteen five, I believe is the MSRP for a Del Mar in 2024. It claims 84 horsepower, I believe, and 194 foot-pounds of torque, <laughs> which I don't have time to go into all the details of why electric bikes always claim more torque than they feel like they have compared to regular motorcycles. The only thing I'll say is that I think Aerie is planning on doing a shop manual episode about this very topic, and of course, that's good news for all of us because we'll learn something. The other spec that's important is the 10.5 kilowatt hour battery. Oh, our ramp is closed. Uh-oh, everybody. Holy smokes. We're going the wrong direction now, and we're going to have to figure out where to go. <laughs> anyway, it's got a 10.5 kilowatt hour battery, which is sort of middle of the road for an electric bike. Large, high capacity electric bikes usually have somewhere between 16 and 20. Other smaller motorcycles will tend to have five to seven. That's where the Del Mar sits in that range. We're gonna take this exit and see if this gets us where we need to go. Now that we're going down a little off-ramp, on-ramp, off-ramp situation, um, we can talk about how the bike feels to sit on, which is uh, pretty good. I mean, it's it's compact and uh, and quite reasonable, I think, in general. It's an easy reach to the bar. The foot pegs are in pretty much the right position, although a couple of my colleagues here at Revzilla points out that they think the foot pegs are too far back and they should be a little bit farther forward. My only real counterpoint to that would be that uh, I think I always am inclined to sit far forward on the seat, but the farther forward you sit on the seat, the less comfortable it is. It really is only reasonable seat to sit on if you slide all the way back against the butt stop. And at that point, if the pegs were farther forward, I'm not sure that would necessarily make more sense. Okay, I think we're correcting our navigational issue here. Seems like maybe. <laughs> we are going to spend more time on the highway than we normally do, which is bad for electric bikes. We'll see how the old Del Mar does. Slaying this on-ramp though. <laughs> now that we are out on the open road on the Del Mar, we could uh, re Oop, turn on the high beams by accident there. They can turn on cruise control and we can hit set and cruise is set and we're cruising. And I think that's a little bit of a strange feature to have on a bike that is realistically uh, an urban and suburban bop about. You're not going to do long trips on a live wire unless you have very good navigation and planning to find charging stations. The point is, I think it's a strange feature, but I like it. I like that Livewire chose to just give the Del Mar some quality features like a full color dash and Google powered navigation, which the dash has and cruise control. I don't find use for a lot of it on a regular basis with this bike especially, but if you're gonna charge $15,000 for a bike, I feel like this is the kind of thing that we as motorcyclists often complain about that like, well, if it's supposed to be a premium product, then why don't you just put cruise control on it? Why don't you just put some other feature on there? And uh, Livewire went ahead and did it. So respect. And just to clarify, the reason that I think that it's notable that the Del Mar has these quality features on here is that this is not the flagship bike for Livewire, right? The Livewire 1 is the big, expensive, high capacity machine in the Livewire lineup. So even though this is uh, not top bike on the totem pole, it's got the, it's got the good stuff. Just a couple other notes I have for this type of riding. Um, one kind of back to the comfort aspect. It's not a very comfortable bike for doing this kind of thing. You're not gonna do it for very long, <laughs> whether you like it or not. So I am not really worried about the comfort. The other note I have is that the tires tram line pretty noticeably is something that some tires do. Like this is grooved concrete surface here on this bridge in Long Beach. And there's a little like wiggle. There's a constant sort of like wiggle and movement in the wheels and in the handlebar. There's nothing to worry about. 
some bikes and some tires do it worse than others, but it's notable on this bike, in my opinion. Now on to the topic of range for the Livewire Del Mar. Basically, it seemed like 50, 5, 0 to 70 miles of range was what was to be expected for all of our testing. I rode it around the city in eco mode only, no highways at all, just eco mode, stoplight to stoplight, surface streets in a city, and I got about 66 miles out of that battery. And then if you ride sort of mixed conditions, uh, commute on the highway and then uh, some surface streets, then you're probably gonna see 50 miles of range, I think. Um, and if it's all highway, I think it's gonna be less. It's, uh, I didn't do a full highway stint only, but I wouldn't be surprised if your total was more like 40-ish. I've heard people say that they got, have gone 80 miles or more if they're really cautious with a battery on a live wire, and that's impressive. I was not able to do that, even in eco mode only. So yeah, that's what I think you'll find. 50 to 70 miles, approximately. Now, in my opinion, that is not bad. I think that that's pretty acceptable, actually, for a bike like this. It's like, if you can go 50, 60 miles, whatever, that should cover a pretty sizable commute, especially if you can plug in on the other end. But the thing I would like to call out is, of course, Livewire claims 110 or 113, I think, miles of range in general. Now, Livewire admits that it does not have 113 miles of range if you go down the highway. That's very clear. But still, the bike underperformed compared to Livewire's claims. And I think that that's too bad because I know that companies want to put their best foot forward and provide what the bike can really do in best conditions possible, whatever, whatever. I just think that you leave people to be disappointed when you say the bike will go 100 miles and then it really only goes 60. You're just bound to be a little bit bummed by that. I don't know that it makes sense from a PR standpoint for Livewire to say it only goes 40 to 50 miles and then when people buy it they're like holy crap I got 65 miles out of it. Would that help? I don't know. Um, but there is your extremely long-winded discussion of range. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. And after all of that talk I didn't even talk about mirrors. Uh, <laughs> And the mirrors are pretty good. They're, they're not too bad. I kind of kind of like the bar end situation. I actually found they work a lot better if you just do that. Um, but I have the, um, they're clearly supposed to be used this way. So I've been leaving them in stock standard form, whatever. Um, but yeah, not too bad. Kind of like hit my gloves a little bit sometimes. Am I allowed to complain about that? Probably not. As for round town manners, the Livewire Del Mar is extremely good. Really good, great throttle response, nice, even, smooth pickup. This is very common for electric bikes and the Livewire delivers 100%. And yeah, the basic balance and, um, and sort of poise of the thing to do footless stops is quite good, I think. It is heavy, it feels heavy when you pick it up off the kickstand, I find. Maybe there's a spec that we didn't talk about. Did I forget that? It weighed in at 436 pounds on the Daily Rider scales, which is, uh, Incidentally, exactly what Livewire claims, I think, uh, which is kind of rare. But anyway, point being, it feels a little bit heavy coming off the kickstand. I think it does not feel heavy once you're riding it. And I just think the low speed manners are really, really good. Uh, boy, yellow light here. This traffic light takes a hot minute sometimes. So uh, let's talk about the dash. Is the uh, glare looks like it might be kind of bad. I'll try and block out the sun here so we can talk about the dash. Um, it is a little round TFT unit, as I said, um, and the switch gear is pretty bulky and complicated, I think, <laughs> um, especially on the right side where you can see there's music controls and voice command and stuff that I just found a little bit overwhelming, especially for uh, a sort of round town machine. In general, it's a handsome little dash. I think it works really well with the sort of minimalist aesthetic of the bike, and uh, everything is fairly intuitive, I guess. Um, you can sort of Leaf through the pages, you can go to navigation, uh, which I don't have turned on because I know where I'm going. But if it works anything like the one on the Sports Dress, it's pretty good, in my opinion. Oh, look at that, we got a green light already. I mess, I didn't, didn't get through as much of the uh, dash stuff as I thought I would. <laughs> so we'll circle back to the dash, um, but for right now, I would like to talk about ride modes, of which there are four standard modes. 
There is uh, Sport, Road, Eco, and Rain. And they all have slightly different parameters for how much of the motor's power, the battery's power, is able to be used and how much regenerative braking there is when you close the throttle, how much sort of quote-unquote engine braking it feels like there is when you slow down. That's the reason I like Eco Mode in general, is I like the stronger regenerative braking or regenerative deceleration when you close the throttle. It feels like a useful thing to have on an electric bike. You use the brakes a little bit less. It's still plenty zippy, in my opinion. Oops. It's still pretty fast in Eco Mode. It, like I rarely find myself opening the throttle. It's got lots of, lots of punch. And you can go in and customize two, I think there are two options for customizable ride modes where you can change the settings for how the bike reacts when you ride it. And that's a good thing because in general, I just feel like the main ride modes are kind of like all pretty similar. I think Eco and Rain should be dumbed down even more. I think it should the bike should feel slower in those modes because that would save more battery. Um, and then when you put it in Sport, have it really, you know, punch pretty hard. I think that would make more sense. But in general, it's easy enough to switch modes on the fly here. We can go to, uh, let's go to, where are we gonna go? We'll go to road mode. I don't know, sure. And now we're in road mode and it feels largely the same as Eco, except when I close the throttle, it coasts a lot more. And just like that, we're on to Lover's Lane. And I guess we could do a little um, passenger test with cruise control, just cause it's kind of fun to do. I'm not gonna spend much time up here though, because by gosh, it's not very comfortable. <laughs> the seat back here is pretty narrow. It's pretty stiff. The legroom is not bad, but it's not good. If you're putting a passenger on this thing, you're not going to go any more than 50 miles anyway, right? But I really think that it's a round town passenger perch as well, for what it's worth. <laughs> Hidoki into the twisty road section. I'm going to switch to sport mode. The throttle response gets a lot sharper and the regen is fairly powerful, which I like. The handling on this bike is really interesting. Part of it is the electric powertrain because of course there's no gyroscopic forces of a crankshaft and pistons spinning around in there. I think this bike is light to the touch, just like electric bikes often are. It feels especially narrow between the legs, as I mentioned before, which kind of makes for a strange handling dynamic. Like it feels so compact that it almost changes your expectation of how light it should feel. And then it has an interesting thing whereby the faster you go through a set of corners, it handles fine, the tires seem okay, but it has sort of an odd thing where it tips into corners really well, but then it almost has a weight and an inertia to the handling when you're leaned over on the side of the tire. And I think that might be because of the large wheels and tires. Nightmare SUV traffic in suburbia. Where was I? Right, the wheels and tires. I think the wheels and tires are kind of big, right? They're 19 inch wheels and they got those big, high profile, meaty, beefy tires on there. And I think when you're in the middle of a corner like this, you can kind of feel a sort of like substantiality and a weight to the handling. And I don't think it's bad. It's just different than other motorcycles typically feel. It's a unique handling experience. It feels very dissimilar from other motorcycles that I've ridden. And that sort of includes electric bikes. And I think in general, the chassis is really nice to use and it's predictable and inspiring and fun. I'm just often struck at how different it feels from a normal motorcycle. Alrighty, going back onto surface streets here. Let's see what sport mode has to say when we open the throttle. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's fast. It's a fast motorcycle. You might have seen trash control light blinking there because when you open the throttle in sport mode, it has enough thrust that it just carries the front wheel and it bounces the wheelie control, the trash control. You've got to have a lot of power on tap to just lift the front wheel without asking for a wheelie. Yeah, the live wire Del Mar is fast. Mm, hang on. It's maybe not fat, it's quick. It's very quick. I think Harley Davidson, <clears throat> excuse me, I think Livewire <laughs> claims 103 mile an hour top speed. So ultimately in a long sprint, it's not gonna be super, super fast, but between maybe 20 miles an hour and 65 miles an hour, it is properly quick. And as I cruised across some of these city surface street bumps and lumps here, I'm reminded there was one other thing I wanted to talk about to do with the suspension, which is that it feels like less stroke than, than Livewire claims. I think the, I forget what the number is. I think it's 4.7 inches. I'll put it on screen right now just to confirm, but it feels less than that. Whatever the number is, I think it's 4.7. It, um, it feels like maybe three or something, three and a half. It, it's like, it, it just hits uh, sharp bumps pretty hard and it doesn't necessarily feel as 
supple or plush as you'd expect for a bike with almost five inches of suspension travel. We got time to talk about the dash a little bit. Maybe we can talk about the dash a little bit more. I was jumping into the settings here. Uh, annoyingly, when you try and go to settings, it'll say settings are locked while in run because the bike is on, but there's no accessory mode that's accessible via the switch, which means in order to do that, you have to shut the bike off and then hold down um, this data cycle button here for a couple seconds and then the dash will come back online in accessory mode and then you can turn it on if you want to. It's like, it's a little tricky. <laughs> it's a little bit not intuitive the way that you access certain pieces of the bike settings because of the nature of an electric powertrain and because it's the way the bike is. All right, we got a red light here coming up and we haven't really talked about brakes very much. This is a good opportunity to do that. We're not going very fast, but um, the brakes on the Del Mar are fine, but not super strong. And part of that is that it's uh, only one disc up there. It's a big Brembo caliper. It's um, radially mounted. It's all the right things. It's steel braided lines, I believe. Yeah. And um, so yeah, all, all the right hardware there, but it's a single disc to stop a 440 pound bike, right? Maybe part of it's the aesthetic of having the open wheel on the right side because it's supposed to look like a flat tracker and maybe part of it's a cost savings thing so only putting one caliper on there. And maybe part of it is that Livewire thinks that that's enough brake and it is. It's not as sharp and as powerful as the rest of the bike is, if I'm being honest. If you come up to this red light here, I'm gonna put it in rain mode. And when we accelerate away from this stoplight, I will give it full sauce. And maybe you'll agree with me that rain mode is maybe a little bit spicier and offers more power than it needs to, <laughs> considering it's supposed to be the tame low power option. All right, here we go. Oh, here we go in rain mode. <laughs> it is, I will say, much, much more gentle with throttle pickup, you know? So as you roll the throttle open, it's much more gentle than sport mode, which really kind of hits hard. And that's probably the main piece of tuning that the that the engineers were after. And uh, if that's the case, that's fair. So I didn't leave myself very much time, but let's circle back to those questions at the beginning that I was so much more intrigued over rather than uh, just range and whatnot. The, the biggest one is like, is this a viable piece of transportation that's entertaining enough to entertain a uh, died in the wool motorcyclist? I think the answer is yes. I think it's good. I think it's a cool bike. I think there are some pieces of it that I find to be a bit of a letdown. I don't think the seat's good enough. There's just something a little strange going on with the suspension. Uh, the interface and the dash is sort of like more complicated and um, and hemmed in by already built Harley Davidson software that that is holding it back a little bit from being sort of truly simple. But in general, I'm impressed and I like it. And I think that if you're interested in an electric bike, it's something you should look at. But how does it handle the old off-road shortcut? Now, normally an electric bike might not be the territory, but here on Daily Rider, we don't really discriminate. <laughs> and also, you know, it's a flat tracker, right? And that's actually something I'd like to talk about because one of the modes, if you go to sport mode, which you can see there, I got the little S there. So I press this button, you can see custom A, rain, eco, road, and sport. If you're in sport mode and you hold down this button, we will see a little flat tracker. I think it shuts off rear ABS, yeah, rear ABS off, and, um, and it opens up the uh, leniency of the traction control. So let's get our flat track on and see how, how oh, okay, see how it goes. <laughs> Rap. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty lenient, I suppose. This bike does not feel like it has, oh my gosh, <laughs> ah, four and a half inches of suspension travel, gosh. It's punishing on stuff like that. The flat track TC off is pretty good. However, I'm going to take it out of flat track mode. Rain mode here. Let's try rain mode just for goofs. Yeah, yeah, very tame. Very tame. Fair enough. I'm going to go back to sport mode and then I'm going to hold down this button down here, which is going to shut off traction control, which I appreciate. And uh, then you can really. <laughs> Then you can really get sideways. <laughs> uh, it's pretty wild. <laughs> There's so much power on tap. It's really, really fun. <laughs> Man, you can hurt yourself doing this. <laughs> it is 
a great time. Oh boy, a great time. And one thing I appreciate about the Del Mar is that you can shut off traction control and slide past your heart's content, if I'm honest, but it doesn't totally lose itself. It doesn't like freak out and spin up in a way that electric bikes used to, which was dangerous. There's still a little bit of torque mitigation and it makes it really controllable and easy to use in those situations, which I so appreciate. Because if you're gonna encourage people either with an aesthetic or a flat track mode or being able to shut off traction control, I really want the bike to be able to deliver that feeling and that fun, and it does. Okay, now with traction control off and in sport mode, you can do a wheelie and the thing is monstrous with its wheelies. <laughs> it does wicked wheelies. Good throttle control, good throttle response, nice and intuitive and plenty of power. Even being kind of heavy and uh, I got a lot of respect for that. <laughs> the wheelies on this bike are really, really fun. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> so fun. Last question is, can you back it in, everybody? And you can shut off that rear ABS by going to flat track mode, but I always find, ah, there we go. <laughs> a little bit of a, little bit of a back in, sort of. Um, I always find um, electric bikes, though, to be pretty difficult to actually get Swayze when you back it in. And we got a van coming towards us. We got to take it easy here. Because you can't really use the motor to keep the rear wheel spinning, and it's, that's, on a gas bike, what makes backing it in possible is that modulation. <laughs> so you can like yeah. lock it up, but there's Ari Henning, everybody, working hard as usual. So yeah, the backing in is uh, tricky, but possible, especially if you're uh, better at it than I am. Time for a U-turn challenge, everybody. We got two parking spaces and no more than that. So can we do it? I think so. I think it's pretty good at this kind of thing. Let's go here, we go, oop, I fudged up. Let's go here, we go full lock left. Oh yeah, look at that. Parking spot and a half maybe? Maybe a little bit more? <laughs> All right. We got some former daily riders out here to greet us today. And that's the end of our Del Mar Daily Rider. And I'm not gonna rev it up and listen to it because it doesn't really make any noise. But uh, yeah, I don't know, what do you think? That was fun, right? Especially at the end there, doing the wheelies and um, goofing around. I think it has that, uh, it's got that little, it's got that playful nature, you know? Which I just really appreciate. Anyway, anyway getting distracted. Let's, uh, let's do Instagram questions here and we'll find out what uh, you, the dedicated Daily Rider viewer, wants to know. Alrighty, everybody, jumping into Instagram questions. First one is from Coot Rocks, who asks, is the quote freedom of a motorcycle still there when the extension cord is so short? Interesting question. I said I was bored with the conversation about range, but I like this because this is more of a cultural question, right? Like, uh, especially coming from the culture of Harley Davidson, where freedom is a big part of like, go across the open plains, see America, be yourself. I don't, I don't really know how good a job I did representing Harley's brochures. But the point is, that's a big piece of Harley-dom, right? And yeah, is there less freedom because you have less range? And to a certain extent, yes, I can't deny that, especially if you love touring or if you that's really a big piece of your motorcycle riding. I'll just give you this anecdote. I first got my KTM 950 Supermoto in 2009 when I was living in San Francisco, and I commuted across San Francisco, maybe five miles or something like that, and then home after taking the bus for a few months <laughs> before I got my bike, it really changed the way that I felt about my commute to work. It changed the way I felt about my life surrounding my workday. It just totally changed my perception of the whole thing. I did feel free. I didn't feel confined by having to leave work to get the 436 bus or the 511 bus or the 632 bus or whatever. I left when I wanted to. And if I wanted to go to meet my friend and shoot some pool on the way home, or if I wanted to take a ride on the way home by way of, you know, whatever, riding on some twisty roads and taking 10, 15 extra miles to do that, I could do that. That freedom was the big piece of my life in those days, being able to do what I wanted when I wanted to do it. And I think that any motorcycle, including an electric one, does capture that, if that's what you're after. If that's not what you're after, then maybe not. But hopefully that helps uh, address that question. I think that's a good question. Thank you.
Next question is from GVG Wheels, who says, with a parent company whose owners have made uh, loud pipes save lives a personality trait, how is having such a quiet but powerful motorcycle in an urban environment in regards to safety? Good question. I did not think it really made a difference. I live in Southern California where people are pretty aware of motorcycles in general, and I never felt like someone moved over on me because they didn't hear me, or I, I found no difference between riding this bike around and any other motorcycle, to be honest with you. But I did have a colleague who said when he had this bike uh, at home and he was testing it, his wife was concerned uh, because he was not on a bike that was making noise, and she really felt like that was going to make it less safe for him. So is it something that you could concern yourself with? Yeah, absolutely. I didn't notice any difference, and that was my experience. <laughs> so take that for what it's worth. Next question is from one quick 26 who says, does ambient temperature seem to affect range? My current em employer has several all electric vehicles and the weather seems to play a role with range. Good question. So I asked Livewire about this because I was curious about how the battery was affected too. I got some numbers back for recommended storage temperatures and recommended operating temperatures. We can put them on screen right now. I don't remember what they are, but they are really wide. <laughs> Basically, it doesn't seem like Livewire is particularly worried about it. They go down to negative something and, and really hot. Practically, there's no real restriction on storage temperature or operating temperature, but you are right that it can have an effect on batteries, and that's something that I would recommend doing more research on if you feel like you're going to store or use the bike in a particularly hot or cold environment. Next question is from Phil Herbert, who says, at this point, is it really just the range and the cost that's holding these bikes back? <laughs> And my first instinct to this question is, other than that, Mrs. Lincoln, how was the play, right? Like, yeah, is it just range and cost? Those are two huge things that, that need to be considered. The reason I say this question, because I think that it's a fair call out, and I don't think that uh, Phil was asking it facetiously, though uh, they might have been. Here's my quick take. Is range anxiety a real thing? Can you go on a ride and then get stuck somewhere and have to turn around and think, oh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna make it to a charger or to an outlet? And is that harder than having to find a gas station? Yes, undeniably, that exists. The thing is, it's a compromise for a machine that lives inside a sphere of culture that already has so many compromises, right? Like what if someone said, uh, motorcycles, I don't know, like when it rains, you get wet. Like anytime someone says that to me, I'm like, yeah, that's part of the deal. I don't know, whatever, I don't care. And if you say you ride that motorcycle because it's uncomfortable, but you think it looks cool, great. Uh, you, you like this motorcycle, but it's too expensive, great. These are all compromises that we make. And if the electric thing just like totally turns you off, no pun intended, like if it's just sort of like, doesn't make sense to you and you don't like it for other reasons, that's fine. I just think leaning on this whole like, oh, I can only go 80 miles. I just don't think it holds a lot of water. There are lots and lots of motorcycle rides that I take that don't last 80 miles. And I think that if viewed in that context, it's like just totally reasonable to have a machine that can do that. I get it's so easy to like pick apart this logic because it's such an easy thing to measure and be and complain about. But I think if we ask ourselves why we're doing this, the real question is, is it fun? Do we like it? Does it serve the purpose we want it to serve? And if it does those things, then like, whatever, don't worry about the other stuff, right? Last question is from Tony Last Name, who says, using its own Google translated name against it, if this bike were a body of water, which body of water is it? So Del Mar, I think, means of the sea or from the sea or something like that, which doesn't actually have anything to do with why this bike is called Del Mar, as far as I understand it. But it's still a fun question, so let's tackle it. What body of water is the Livewire S2 Del Mar? I thought about it a bit. don't have a great answer. Here's what I've got. This uh, Livewire is sort of a medium-sized river. It's got little rapids in it, and it looks pleasant enough. It's got some calm sections and some choppy sections, and you think like, oh, that looks nice. I'll take a swim in that river. And then when you do, all of a sudden you get these like weird currents pulling on you. And you think like, whoa, this water is moving faster than I was expecting. And it's colder than I was expecting. And it's sort of like a little bit more invigorating than I thought it would be. So that's the body of water I think embodies this particular motorcycle. It's easy to look at and think it's another electric motorcycle. Yeah, it looks sharp or now I don't think it looks cool. Whatever. It is what it is. It, I think, is more engaging, easier to use, more fun to use, faster and, and more exciting than people give it credit for. Maybe that I gave it credit for when I, when I was about to try it. So maybe that's on me. But if you're thinking it's bland, it's not. It's not just to swim in another river. There's, there's stuff going on under the surface that's going to pull you around and make you think about the decision you made in a good way, I think. <laughs> All right. Thank you, as usual, for all your Instagram questions. Very nice of you to do that. Let's jump inside and put the sucker on the Daily Rider leaderboard, shall we?
Hey everybody, okay, here we are inside RevZilla West. We've got the Livewire S2 Del Mar on the Daily Rider leaderboard, ready to go up here. There are a few things I would like to address before we do that. First of all, we never circled back on range, and that's my fault. You may have noticed on the Livewire's dash, we were showing 60% battery left when we got here today. The daily ride was longer than usual because of our navigation curveball, <laughs> and we were showing 40, 40, 45 or 50 miles of range left according to the bike. I think that that is optimistic. I think it was more like 30 miles of range left if I had to guess the way that we were riding. The way that the Livewire Del Mar's range works is it basically always is optimistic. It always thinks best case scenario, if you ride in a really efficient way from here on out, here's how many more miles you could get. If you get on the highway for 20 miles and it kills the battery down to 50%, it might say you've got another 50 miles to go or 40 miles to go. When really, if you do that again, you're only gonna have another 20 miles to go. Does that make sense? One other thing I didn't talk about um, on the ride was you may have noticed the dash flickering, which we noticed in GoPro testing for each daily rider that we do. And uh, the dash does not flicker um, when you're looking at it in real time. It's obviously just a, uh, an affect of the camera. So keep that in mind and try not to condemn the bike for that. Last thing I'll say is I have written an article about this bike. It will go on the Common Tread website sometime soon. You can check the link in the description of this video for more information. And in that article, I will talk more about uh, range findings um, and uh, other experiences that I had on the bike. For now though, let's put this Mamma Jamma on the Daily Rider leaderboard, shall we? So, is it good, viable transportation? Yes, absolutely. If someone said they were buying their third or fourth motorcycle, which one should they get? This one would be near the top of the Daily Rider list, probably maybe just under the M1000 or the Triumph Scrambler. But for one and only bike, it's limited. It's like halfway to a scooter as far as capability, just because the range is limited. I don't really wanna talk about it because I don't think it matters, as I said in the Instagram questions. But when it comes time to buy a bike, I get it. And I think that the versatility and the um, conventionality, if you will, of a standard ICE motorcycle still holds weight in this day and age. It's hard to get anywhere as an electric bike. A BMW CEO 4 near the bottom in 2022. Zero DSRX, fantastic electric motorcycle. Pretty good range, very fast, capable, functional, cool, near the bottom of the Daily Rider leaderboard in 2023. It's hard. It ain't easy being green, as Kermit would say. And uh, the Livewire Del Mar is gonna go at the bottom of the board. I do not want this to be a total condemnation of the machine as a way to get around a city, as a way to get from point A to point B as long as those points aren't too far apart, because I do think there's a lot to that bike. And I think that if Livewire can continue to grow and sell motorcycles, um, that the versions 2.0 and 3.0 of this bike and ones like it have a lot of potential to be really engaging and fun um, and practically useful. All right, that's it. The Livewire is on the board. I had fun with that motorcycle. I hope you had fun on the ride to work today. Uh, stay tuned for more daily riders in the future. In the meantime, hope you had fun. Please ride safe. See you soon. Really, just gonna run that stop sign and pull out in front of me. I'm trying to review a motorcycle here. And now I gotta look at your Mercedes butt cheeks. I'm disappointed. Now you're slowing down. Maybe you're letting me by. I guess I appreciate that. I do appreciate that. I changed my mind. I do appreciate that. Anyway. Where was I before I was complaining about Mercedes drivers who are actually quite polite? <clears throat> the handling on this bike is...